Assalamu alaikum dear friends, I'm Mukhtar Dar Khan, I teach Islamic studies and international relations at the University of Delaware. There are three or four days left to go to the month of Ramadan. I wish you all the best. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this Ramadan a blessed month for all of us. May it, may it bring peace, may it bring prosperity, and may it also bring an opportunity for us to become spiritually richer and inshallah come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this blessed month of Ramadan. Uh, today I want to share with you a new project that I'm beginning with The idea is to interpret and reflect on a verse of the Quran one ayah at a time. Initially I wanted to do a verse daily and say an ayah a day keeps the Satan away but I realized that would be an incredible commitment at least I'm not sure whether I could uh, so consistently find time uh, and energy and opportunity to do the seed of one ayah every day. So I've decided to do an ayah at a time and my goal inshallah at least in this month of Ramadan is to do as many as I can. Uh, from traditions we learn that uh, that modest uh, deeds uh, which are done consistently uh, are more appreciated uh, than deeds which are grand but episodic. So my goal today is to tell you a little bit more about this project. What I wish to do is to reflect on a single verse. Uh, I will obviously research the various commentaries on this of this verse. But this is motivated by two things. One, the proximity of Ramadan and one of the most important aspects of the month of Ramadan is that the Quran was revealed in this month. And so one way in which we give uh, due respect to Ramadan or do justice to Ramadan is by trying to understand more, reading more, reciting more, uh, and coming as close as possible to God through the study of Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Sad, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun li yaddabaru ayatihi wa li yatazakkar ulul al-baq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in this verse, uh, this is verse 29 in chapter 38, that he has revealed this blessed book, this mubarak book, this noble book to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in order that his followers, that is we, reflect upon it, li yaddabaru ayatihi, to reflect on his verses. And he also says, for those who are people of understanding, which is those people who may have already have knowledge uh, of the divine purposes and divine mysteries, for them this book comes as a reminder. But to all of us, it is an invitation to deliberate on the verses of the Quran. There is a lot of tafasis available out there, lots of commentaries written and spoken, uh, but often many of them uh, are essentially trying to repeat uh, the views, the opinion, and the scholarship of medieval and classical scholars. What I wish to do in this project is uh, to try and reflect on the verses as if they were revealed to us today. If the Quran is speaking to us today, in the world that we live in, in the context in which we exist, what is it saying to us? How should we live Quran in this world? I'm obviously talking about the modern world and especially to Muslims who live in the West. How can we bring the wisdom of the Quran into our lives? How can we come closer to God as we live in America and Europe? and in the modern world. So my purpose is to deliberate on it. If my deliberations are enlightening to you, you find them useful, then pray for me and my family. But if you do not find them enlightening, then I suggest that you pray for me and for yourself that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may enlighten us. After all, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who takes us out of darkness and brings us into enlightenment through the Quran. Uh, so, there is one methodological issue that I want to discuss. I will repeat it uh, in the early discussions of the various verses, but I want to make it very clear. 
that there are lots of debates about various verses of the Quran right now in the social media, on YouTube, in the internet, in masajid, at uh, Islamic conferences. Broadly, the debates are between those who choose to take the literal meaning of the verses or those who choose to contextualize the verses. There aren't two groups. It's just that these are two different strategies. Let me stress it. There aren't groups out there which take the Quran literally and groups out there which take the Quran always in a context. It is just a strategy to take the Quran literally or to take the Quran in context. For example, if you look at people who are progressive and liberal, when they look at Ayah 434 in Surah Al-Nisa, which talks about giving men permission to beat their wives. They always talk about the necessity to contextualize that ayah. They always talk about the necessity to understand it in the context of the revelation, in the context of the history when the Quran was revealed, so on and so forth. But the same people, when they read like Rahaf al 2 to 56, to, uh, in the Surah Al-Baqarah, they are willing to take it literally. So it is essentially a kind of judgment on the Quran itself. When people find the most obvious and most literal word of the Quran acceptable to them, to their normative preferences, uh, to their political agenda, then they are willing to take the Quran literally. But when they come across an obvious meaning, a zahiri meaning of the Quranic text, which is somehow unacceptable to them uh, on the grounds of their political agenda or normative preferences that they have, acquired from sources other than the Quran, then they try to contextualize those verses. Will I be trying to do the same thing? I pray in the very beginning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects me from becoming a victim of this strategy. I don't want to be using literal meanings when it suits any political agenda that I may have, and I don't want to be contextualizing the Quran uh, if the Quran Nauzubillah contradicts any of my political agendas. Uh, it would be false to say that I don't have any normative preferences. I do have normative preferences, and I will tell you what they are. Uh, I believe in compassion. I believe in justice. I believe in equality. I believe in pluralism. And therefore, when I interpret and I deliberate on the Quran, I will be privileging these values. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Zumar, verse 18, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Al-lazina yastamiyuna al-khawl wa yattabi'una ahsanahu, ula'ika al-lazi hadahumu Allah, wa ula'ika hum ulul al-baab. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in this Quran, is this, in this ayah, is that those who listen to the Quran, and follow the best meaning from it. They are people who have truly been guided by Allah and they are truly people of understanding. So this is the methodological basis of my deliberations. I want to articulate the most beautiful meaning of the Quran. Now clearly that is a very arrogant statement to make. I'm not saying that I have uh, the mystical qualities or the daraja or maqam where I can articulate the most beautiful meaning. But I'm capable of understanding the Quran in a way in which I think this is the most beautiful meaning. And therefore, I'm going to define a beautiful meaning as that meaning which privileges pluralism, that pr privileges equality, equality of men and women, uh, equality of Muslims and non-Muslims, equality of all human beings. And I will also privilege those meanings which promote democratic values, which promote religious tolerance, which promotes interracial acceptance, which promote compassion and forgiving. These are all, to me, the meanings of the composite term ihsan. And therefore, since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ يَسْتَمِئُونَ خَوْلْ وَيَتَّبِئُونَ أَحْسَنَهُ I want to become like those who listen to the word of Allah and follow the best meaning of it, try to find out the most beautiful meaning of it. So inshallah, I hope that in the next uh, few months, few years inshallah, 
uh, I will deliberate on many verses from the Quran and try to articulate and try to discuss and converse with you uh, or pursue along with you the most beautiful meaning that is possible of those texts within the limits of my intellect, within the limits of my knowledge. Uh, at the bottom of this page, I've posted a link uh, and that link should help you to follow this uh, video blog uh, regularly. So please pray for me and please also accompany me on this journey of discovery. Thank you very much.